Morning guys. So I have a situation. Sheila and I, as you know, are in a very happy marriage. But I don't know if you guys are aware, if you ever walk out of the mall with your wife or your spouse and, and then that, that girl passes you by that's just drop dead gorgeous and you're not looking for the wrong intentions, but you just can't help but appreciate someone else's beauty. Well, that's what happened today. This is our Porsche GT3 RS. And she is that beauty. She walked by. Sheila got a little mad at me. I'm not gonna lie. If I had to have a weekend chick, that'd be her. Let's get running. I don't know guys, after my intro, I know Sheila's mad at me. So, it's all good. I told a girl, we'll go out, we'll get some dinner. But um, I wanted to show you guys real quick what we're doing, we're gonna get running here. So this is our radar and laser defense system from Anti-Laser Priority. Um, this is gonna be a series of parts. Um, we use the RX and TX laser heads, which are detection and diffusion. We do have a net radar for the front as well as a net radar for the rear. And these are completely integrated systems, guys. So what we're gonna do is we get these on the vehicle as discreetly as possible. And these are full peace of mind protection. I mean, um, they do have diffuser characteristics. They're not jammers, they're diffusers. Um, when in certain modes, they do just work as parking sensors. So for legality issues, it's a, it's a very versatile system. But um, we're gonna cover this thing top to bottom with you guys in our Porsche here. and. The first thing we're going to do is get this thing open. We do get this pre-programmed on the bench just to make sure that you can actually deliver the vehicle on time when it's expected, uh, not try to figure it out post installation. But um, we're also going to go through and label all of our connectors on the bench. Uh, that's important to us. We do P-Touch label all the connectors so that way vehicle ever has to go for service. A lot of the heads get mounted in the bumper locations. So if a bumper has to be removed at the dealership or something like that, it's very serviceable, service loops, labeled, I mean, just Again, stuff like what the dealership would do. So um, we try to respect that, but enough banter. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing opened up, get it wired on the bench, go into some super fast YouTube mode and uh, hopefully create some really cool content today. So y'all stay with us. So we got our parts all on the bench. Uh, we got it all connected. We went through some of the configuration and stuff. We are gonna go ahead and get running on this, but we're not necessarily gonna start with the radar portion first. Uh, we have a CarPlay interface from uh, ZZ2, uh, Rich and the guys over there. We're gonna go ahead and get the radio out of this thing. We're gonna do the CarPlay interface, just knock that out of the way. And then, um, cause we're probably gonna need some help getting the bumpers pulled on and off. But um, let's go ahead and get started on that. We're gonna set you up, do a little time-lapse and uh, run through but these parts I, it should be really really cool so wireless car play we're adding a backup camera all on the factory unit and stuff so we'll go through the install with you guys let's go
Hey guys, we're gonna follow up with you from the uh, CarPlay interface where we last left off. So we got the majority of that installed. We got it functioning. We'll go back and touch on that when we complete the installation. We just didn't wanna to go too far because we needed to get our backup camera run. Uh, today, what DJ and I are gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get old Project Peach's masked off. Gonna get it all protected, get a power supply on it, and we're gonna start going. We're gonna bang this thing out. So we're gonna show you coverage on how we run these cables in this vehicle how they're labeled, how the system functions. Again, in the first part, we kind of showed you how to configure it and stuff. We do it on the bench. Um, so got all that functional and uh, now it's just time to do some work. So follow along with us and let's go get into Project Peaches. Here we go. So we got um, got all of our harnesses prepped here. So DJ's got all these labeled. We do all these on the bench when we're setting up and configuring the system. But uh, just for the serviceability aspect, Porsche ever had to pull a bumper or anybody, they're all labeled. Um, we did get our radar in here. Um, it does take some time building these brackets and shimming them up. I mean, these things have to sit absolutely perfect. So zero degrees level to the ground, which we pre-measure prior to putting it up on jack stands. Then we have to use a stick across to try to make sure that we get it all set up to where it's straight with the front of the vehicle. I mean, it's it's not as simple as you think. So we have to get crafty. It's all stainless hardware there, obviously. Um, DJ's got our harness prepped. It comes through here, runs with all the factory harnessing through here. And you guys can see in here, he's all with the factory harnessing through the wheel well here. We got the wells out of it. Um, comes up and these cars are actually really forgiving so uh, we went right through the firewall in a fire in a grommet there and um, he's actually moved on I'm getting the front I'm gonna actually get some sensors put on the bumper here so bumper wise what we have is again we're probably gonna look at this location here we got one in the middle and then one on the outside there same locations but um, we'll get these hung and then we'll do our final measurements to square them up once the bumper goes back on the car and everything yeah, we do pre-measure all this stuff with our Wixie. It's a little digital level so that way we know once we got it up. But um, check in, see where DJ's at back here. What you got going on back here? Well, I'm actually about to pull the bumper off. I got two bolts. Okay. I'll need a hand. Okay. Yeah. I know this so one. I guess I'm gonna move this camera back here. I'm not gonna hold DJ up. We're gonna go ahead and get this back clip off of old Peaches here, as, a, as Don likes to call her. And uh, yeah, then we'll show you. We got some cool parts for the back. So we have a tag frame that we have built. 
And then um, it actually holds our sensors. It's all pre-measured, bent, the whole nine. And then radar is going to go behind just like in the front there. So uh, let's go ahead and get back to time lapse, but y'all stay with us. checking in with you guys so we're about to put the back bumper back on here um, got our tag frame on here that's custom built uh, it's bent exactly at the angle that the bumper sits when it's on the car um, got our backup camera in there uh, the plate is also notched out for that this does relocate the tag down a little bit just to make room for the sensors to make sure everything's good when it's on there so it definitely makes it a little easier having the parts kind of pre-manufactured that we can work off the vehicle and then we still get access to, uh, I guess, is the tow hook in the back. So, super cool. Um, harnesses here. This is kind of how we prep them. So this is going to be our backup camera. This is also the rear TX, the rear RX sensor. Again, they are all labeled. So if this thing ever goes in for service or anything, this is the loop here, right? So we put a service loop back here. They pull the bumper. Everything's labeled appropriately and dressed like factory harnessing. So that's the way it should be. Then we have our radar, our net radar in here. So we did get that in here. Again, all stainless hardware like normal. Got a metal bracket that uh, mounts to the rebar on the inside, so everything's super solid. Uh, completely leveled out. So it's, they're tricky, but um, it's important. So DJ and I are gonna go ahead and get this thing hung on here and um, hopefully keep moving to the front and keep on keeping on with old peaches. man this gt3 rs is looking like a car again so got the front clip on we got our sensor mounted over there we still need to mount our front sensor here we just wanted to get it on the ground to make sure it was 100 percent level so that one we're just building a little shim for um the brackets on the outside of these um if they need get molded they are aluminum brackets so we can bend them as necessary just kind of 
we aim them when they're off the car, but when we get them on, we get it back on the ground, we make sure all the final adjustment is perfect. Uh, let's show you what we got in the back. So. so like I was saying, the plate frame definitely made our life a lot easier. So having that prefabricated, we could work it off the car. But um, let's see, I got DJ's going inside here. He's got uh, cables run in from the back. So we're gonna get everything run over. We are gonna touch on the CarPlay interface again, just to kind of show you guys how that works a little bit. It's a really, really cool piece. Um, kind of unlocks your factory head unit for all the uh, features you're looking for out of a modernized one. So our brain for the CarPlay piece will go over here. Uh, the control unit for the ALP system will go over here. He's just getting all the sills protected now so the car doesn't get damaged. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep on running. So you guys stay with us. All right, guys, so we got Project Peaches all wrapped up here. We wanted to take you around it a little bit, show you some of the parts. Um, okay, we got it all cleaned up, ready to roll. Again, what a beautiful car. Um, so front of the vehicle, we have our three heads. We have our RX head here. We have an RX head here in the center. And then we have another one of our RX heads here. So good coverage on the front. Uh, with, we are obviously within all the limitations of the sensors. They don't want to be anything outside of 24 inches. Sweet spot is kind of around 22, 23. Um, so that's where we are center of the lens, the center of the lens. Um, we have our custom tag frame here. We have the backup camera we installed. So again, the tag frame is notched to sit around the cam. Then we have our sensors here in the back. Um, we're now here doing a little testing on this thing. We actually run it down our strip here. Not flying, obviously, but we want to get it with the TX sensor coverage. Uh, TX sensors only activate over 20 miles an hour. So we just need to get it out. We see LED indication on the system, which I'll show you guys here. Obviously, we're not going to drive it, but I'll show you. Kind of show you what we got. Okay, so once we get inside here, um, I'm going to show you a couple things. So key to the on position, um, we get our regular nav screen. Oh, well, we get our startup from ALP. Um, so when we go in here, we want to be on auxiliary, and then we go ahead and select Interference aux. Interference detection. Active. So the, or I'm sorry, Navi. Navi is actually going to launch the CarPlay menu. So what it's doing right now is this is the main menu for the CarPlay interface, um, because there's quite a few options to it. Um, what it's going to do is wirelessly, we'll see momentarily, it's going to go ahead and CarPlay will illuminate, which it just did. Moments later, what it'll do here is it's just going to catch my phone. Again, it's in my pocket, and it's going to go ahead and connect to CarPlay. Oh, there we go. So, um, and again, now we have our CarPlay menu. So again, all OEM. What we did, we did add a backup camera to this. So we'll show you. Our vehicle in reverse. So we do our parking lines. They are also dynamic. Actually, let's go ahead and start this, and I can show you that. vehicle running here we'll go reverse image comes up and then we do get dynamic parking lines as we turn the wheel so just like OEM so really cool stuff there um, voice control uh, we use actually the phone button on here so the phone button will launch Siri and then we can talk to Siri whatever we need to do the factory touch panel all works, so you can scroll through with the factory touch panel, or if you guys can see here, you can actually use the jog wheel, and the jog wheel will take us through our stuff as well. So we've got a music, for example. So music will come up there in just a moment. So here we go, that's what we were listening to, some Yellow Wolf. Um, in the center here, let's see if we can show you this. In the center here we did a, um, so this is where our controller for the ALP system is located. Uh, we have a little lasered bezel in here. It says GT3RS, just to kind of personalize it for the client. Um, with the controller, what this will do, this does have a Bluetooth module in it, but say for example, the client's not connected for Bluetooth, um, our Hi-Fi box will give us all of our notifications as to what laser we're being hit with, if we're getting radar bands like K-band, KA-band, anything like that. Um, it'll also give us the ability to um, program the system, do anything we need to in that respect. Um, the LED indicator, what it'll do is, so if we press the menu button, right now the, the amber laser, or the amber LED tells us that we're in laser defense mode. Um, so it lets us know that the system is protecting us. Um, once we get above 20 miles an hour, like if we were driving this vehicle, 
above 20 miles an hour, this LED is gonna go blue. Uh, when it goes blue, we're in kind of our ultimate defense, right? That's when our TX sensor is activated um, and we're in ultimate defense mode. Um, if we press the menu button here. Parking only. So now we have a green LED and what that did is it forced the parking sensor system. So when these things are shipped to the US, they actually come as a parking sensor system. So let's see if we can go out and activate one. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but. I don't know if you guys can hear those chimes, but as you walk in front of the sensors, they're nothing more than a glorified uh, parking assist system. So basically a rear avoidance kind of system, if you would. So, and then we can go ahead and put it back in our laser mode. Menu. Let's see. Parking range, Oops. six. So, but anyway, so you guys get the idea. So, that's about it for Project Peaches here. I mean, this is a really cool build. Uh, DJ and I kind of walked you through the process, so hopefully you guys see how the radar systems are installed with us. This one, we didn't get super custom in regards to how we house the sensors. Again, it's super important with these sensors that they're placed appropriately. I mean, we spend a lot of time leveling these and making sure that, uh, they're just installed appropriately, you know. It's, these systems to work correctly have to be installed correctly. I mean, that's super, super important. So there's a lot of time in setting them up. Obviously running the cables on vehicles like this is not an easy task, but something we do pretty often. So um, just a pretty complex system as a whole. So hopefully you guys got some information from this. If you guys have questions about this, obviously the CarPlay interface is a really cool aspect of this as well. Uh, we have CarPlay options for a lot of vehicles. Uh, mostly European, some domestics, um, but reach out if you guys are interested in just adding CarPlay to a factory radio that you have, um, might have a solution for you. So you guys reach out, whether you comment in the descriptions below or in the comment box below. And again, make sure you guys are subscribing to the channel, drop us a like, hit that notification bell, make sure you're following our videos so that way you can follow all the cool cars we get, all the uh, installations we're doing and the sound systems and stuff. So. Again, we really enjoy what we do and we just want to share it with you guys. So you guys stay tuned to the channel, continue to subscribe and uh, you can also follow us. I think some of these are on IGTV as well. So don't be shy, we're out there. So if you guys have any questions, reach out and just thanks for watching.